Hello everyone, welcome to another tutorial video for Keystage. So today I'm going to demonstrate everything on my live setup here. Uh, I'm going to go through the hardware connections and also the software that I'm using and I'm specifically going to talk about how I integrated AUM into my live setup and how I control the parameters and effects on AUM with Keystage. And after that I'm going to go through a song setup section by section and uh, I'll specifically talk about custom translators and how I actually use custom translators to change sections or manipulate these pedals here. But first let me go through the hardware, hardware connections. So my main keyboard is a Note Electro 5 and it is connected to this audio interface Roland to a Capture EX uh, by MIDI cables, by DIM MIDI cables. And this audio interface is also connected to my iPads with a Camera connection kit and with a USB cable. So that's how iPad communicates with, with North Electro 5, through this Roland Duo Capture EX. Uh, here are my pedals, it is a sustain pedal, and this pedal on the left hand side allows me to move to the next section in key stage. And the expression pedal in the middle, uh, I can just assign any parameter to that, uh, actually on any part. Uh, this is my microphone for back vocals, which is also connected to this Roland Duo Capture EX. And here is a Seaboard block, which is connected to iPad with the Bluetooth connection. And finally, I have an iPod here, an old iPod, um, which is also connected to this iPad with, with the Bluetooth connection. I'm gonna show you during the demonstration how I actually use this iPod. Okay, here are my connections on AUM. The first column is my back vocals, which goes through a effect processor called Echopad. And here I have four synth apps, uh, Synth Master Player, Jerry Shred, and two instances of Sunriser. Now all of these goes through a pair of effect processors of AUM, uh, a low pass filter and a parametric EQ. They are all routed to uh, bus A, which is routed to the USB uh, Roland Duo Capture EX, my audio interface, and goes through another effect processor called Amplitude. Now in the background, I have some other additional apps working. Uh, I have Jordan Tron, Galileo, I Symphony Orchestra, and Sample Tank. And also, there are some other apps. Here is uh, Apollo MIDI. This allows me to connect my iPad to uh, the iPod Touch that I attached on the side of uh, my North Electro. Uh, here, XKey Plus is actually a utility app, a free app that allows you to connect XKey Air to your iPad with Bluetooth, but it ap apparently it allows you to connect any Bluetooth device to your iPad. And here I use it to connect Seaboard Block to the iPad. Now, there is one other app which is called MIDI Flow. Now, MIDI Flow allows me to create virtual ports, virtual, virtual MIDI ports, and connect them to the actual ports of of my sound synthesizers. I'm gonna explain why I need to create these virtual ports, but um, I, I'm planning to include creation of virtual MIDI ports in the next update of key stage. Now, the reason that I'm using virtual ports is the following. I created a virtual port for Sunriser, Synthmaster Player, and Geoshred, the, the synthesizers that I connected to AUM. Now remember, they, they are all going through some filters. Uh, low pass filter and a parametric EQ. Now, if I open GeoShreds and take a look at the MIDI control of these filters, now you can see that the low pass filter and parametric EQ, they are all assigned some control change messages. So the MIDI connection is the AUM's or inbuilt virtual port. And for example, uh, the volume signal coming from channel seven, a parameter control change uh, 97, controls the volume of AUM, not JFRED, but AUM. And the same is true, so all the parameters between 97 up to 102 controls these uh, filter parameters. And the same is true for all, all other synthesizers. Now what I do here is the following. I create a virtual port JFRED with double question mark. I denote these virtual ports with double question marks and I map all the signals from this virtual port to the GeoShred itself, except these control change parameters. So they are filters here. But instead, I create another routing, this time from GeoShred to AUM, 
uh, output channel 7 and this time I wrote those signals to, to the 7 channel of AUM and filter all other signals, all nodes and everything. So what I do is I create uh, these virtual ports in my tracks on, on key stage and I'm able to control both JShred and all the filters at the same time on, on, on a single part. So I'm going to demonstrate in a minute. Now let's demonstrate it with Sunriser. I'm going to create a track for Sunriser here. So instead of Sunriser itself, I'm going to open a track for Sunriser with two exclamation marks, the virtual port that I created with a MIDI flow. Okay, now if I create a part, you can see that I have these parameters here, but I have this special set of parameters that I denoted with master. So master volume, master cutoff, what master resonance. These are the parameters that control those filters. So for example, this cutoff filter is not a cutoff filter inside Sunriser, but the cutoff filter that I created you know, on AUM here. So it controls this cutoff filter and resonance. And same is true for all, you know, master EQs. And also master volume. Well, master volume, why would I need master volume here? Well, it's because of the following reason. If I actually add a reverb here on Sunriser, this volume, the inbuilt volume control of Sunriser, uh, controls the volume before the effect. So if I play and turn, vol turn the volume down, the reverb volume still keeps sounding. So, but instead, if I turn the master volume down, it cuts the reverb as well. Okay, now let's create a track for EcoPad. So that's the effect processor that's connected to my back vocals. And uh, I'm controlling EcoPad over channel two. So um, here are some parameters that I control over EcoPad. So for example, I can change the volume here up and down. I can add reverb and reverb decay at the same time. I can control the pan. I just can, can control a bunch of parameters here. And the good thing is if I create another part here and change the effects here, for example, I added the decimator here and I turned the decimator off here so I can as soon as I switch sections, my back vocal effect processor automatically changes. So let's load the default presets. So, okay, let's also create another track for Amplitude. So I'm just going to go through the demonstration on a new song, but after that I'm going to load the song that I want to go through at the end of this demo, uh, tutorial video. So Sam... Amplitude also is controlled over channel 2. Alright, let's turn the master volume of my Sunriser. I created two presets right now, but I'm gonna add more. So now Sunriser goes through Amplitude and I can control the gain and the presence of this Amplitude. Or I can just turn it off by selecting the off parameter or the off presets. Okay, before going on, I want to mention a couple of things about key stage that I should have mentioned earlier. So there's this help, help button here that allows you to actually sh uh, show the help menu or you know help text for any object that you tapped on or any region. So you can just get information about anything, any slider or any button here. Another thing is this external MIDI control. Uh, remember the switch pedal that I mentioned in the beginning. Um, this allows me to actually move to the next section and I choose the input here, pedal control. And so I, I choose a CC number or I can even use a MIDI learn button to choose the CC number. And my pedal sends 124. So when I press the switch button, I just move to the next section like this. So one other thing is that I, I put touch that I talked about in the beginning. So let me create another part here and choose the lead sound. So that's iPod Touch has a small app that I wrote uh, for personal use, uh, which simulates pitch band and modulation signals. So my North keyboard doesn't have a pitch band or, or a joystick, pitch joystick. 
So I just, this is my substitute for that. So let me demonstrate. Okay, this is the song In Memory by Haken. Uh, let me go through the tracks here. So I have Synthmaster, Sunriser, six copies of Sample Tank, each different channel, and two I Symphonic Orchestra, Jordan Tron, Nord, Nord Electro, the keyboard itself, and Echo Pad and Amplitude. So these are the two effect processes that I mentioned before. So let's actually start with, <coughs> with the first part. So we have a basic piano. So the song starts to play piano song. And on the left hand side, I have a synth for the second part. Now, I'm playing, while I'm playing the second part, I switch the section and I still have that same part on the same region, but the left region just changes to a couple of uh, layers. Now, the first one is a single note here on E1. So it is a layer of North's piano and sample tank's pad sound. So they are layered together. And here we have another sound from sample tank, but I need to go into the detail of that because now this is the first time that I'm going to introduce the advanced functions of custom translators. So um, now you can see that we have four layers of custom translators. Let's actually first turn them into basic setup. Um, so this expression, this control change signal, this 114 is the uh, control change signal of my expression pedal. So this is, uh, the expression pedal controls first the volume of this part. And if I go into the advanced part, it says that the, the range that the, the translator applies is from zero to 64, which is halfway through, through the expression pedal. So from 0 to 64, halfway, the volume of this part go, goes up to 80, from 0 to 86. And here it says block incoming signals. So if this was on, then this uh, expression pedal signal uh, 114 will be just blocked here, and then only the volume uh, signal will be translated. But if I switch this off, this expression pedal signal keeps going to the next translator. So these are a chain of translators. Now this says, uh, the second one is actually from 64 to 126, 27, uh, the second half. And in the second half, the volume just goes down from, uh, from 85 down to zero. So the volume first goes up and down uh, through the uh, process of the expression pedal. But not only that, this expression signal still continues to the next translator. And then this translator, <coughs> it, the pan changes from 0 to 128. So the cha pan changes from one ear to the other throughout the stress stage. Not all throughout the stage, but somewhere from 34, 31 to 89. And finally, the same signal also changes the pitch. Uh, from somewhere uh, to the middle, or like 45 here, the pitch goes from the center, center is zero, down to nine, minus 19, uh, 29. Well, okay, what does that number mean, minus 29? So the, when, it, when the output signal is pitch bent, the scale is not from zero to 128 anymore. And the scale is actually from minus 48 up to plus 48. And minus 48 stands for whole pitch down and plus 48 stands for for whole pitch up. The reason that I chose those numbers is to be able to actually uh, divide, for example, full octave pitches into reasonable intervals, like, you know, half interval. For example, if my pitch band uh, sensitivity is a full octave, then minus 48 will represent a full octave, then uh, minus uh, 48 divided by 12, then minus four will represent a, a half pitch or a half a semitone. So that's why I chose those numbers to be able to actually precisely choose the amount of, you know, pitch band uh, modulation in terms of notes or seminodes, semitones. So this was 29 or 29. It doesn't matter whether it's 28 or 29. It's just 
somewhere. So this is the, uh, this is the result of, of, of this change of custom translators. So you can see that one expression pedal can control multiple uh, control change and pitch band signals on a single part or even on multiple parts at the same time. Okay, so I'll, I'll go back to these translators in the later sections. So this is what happens in the second section. Let's move to the next one. So this is a single one, one patch of Sunriser. All right, the next one now gives me the, the lyrics of my back vocals, but let me go into the info parts to see the layerings. So I have two layers of sample tank, which actually are the both uh, instruments. Uh, but now you realize that there is the pitch shifts here. It's on the same region. But if I tap here, I actually can solo things here. This is the one that is one octave down and a little bit less volume. And this is the one on the higher octave with a higher volume. So they are now layered together to give me this uh, octave uh, lead sounds. And on my left hand side, I have the Jordan Trons orchestral sounds, like, uh, like chorus sounds. All right, I need to go into the detail of these parts to actually talk about one more thing here. Now I have this sustain pedal that controls, that sustains the Jordan Tron sound here. But you realize that the sustain pedal, even if I press it down, it doesn't affect sample. It doesn't affect the sample tank's lead sound. And the reason is that uh, in this pedal control here, I flitter the pedal down and pedal up signal. So it basically doesn't receive any pedal signal, uh, sustain pedal signal on these parts. So, and that's a, a part of pedal control. And on, on the left hand side here, oh, sorry, on my left hand, right hand, I have this patch synth master at the same time. Okay, so what about this E1 here? Let's go into the detail of that. Now, this is a single note, E1, a, another patch, but there's another custom translator attached to it. And it, this is actually a trigger translator that triggers a special action. So let me actually take a look at this. So these are all the parameters that I can control, or I can control you know, even other parameters here. And there is this special action part. So these special actions basically allows me to, to perform any of these actions, like move the octave up or down or center, or change the section, or even change the page of an active PDF view attached to, to that current section, or change the half page, or, or panic, just cut the sound down. So you can even assign a panic function to anything. And the special actions work like that. Either you have a note input, or you can have a control change input. It has a trigger condition. So let me, so it's actually the advanced mode. So this says that it, whenever I press the note E1, and if whenever this constant translator receives the note on signal on E1, this action will be performed. So here's what happens. <laughs> So the, as soon as I press E1, it automatically moves to the next section. All right, so this part is a simple two lead sounds. Again, the, the same sound with different volumes. But here is another interesting custom translator action. Now, the first translator uh, is basically changing the a uh, control change is 75, with, again with the expression pedal, from zero to full, uh, 127. Actually, that, that's the chorus effect. So it increases the chorus as I move my pedal up. Now, as for the second one, I have this relative control function here. So let me try to demonstrate that in the following. So the relative control allows you to uh, change any parameter uh, from its initial state uh, to whatever uh, limit you have. 
to, to uh, you know, within your limits. So uh, here is the idea. So this is this controls the brightness signal, the cutoff frequency of sample tank uh, 74. But it says both upper and lower limit are 94. Now, if I go to the parameter section of this, the brightness is actually uh, 64. It's the middle uh, brightness signal. So each track on in key stage keeps track of all the values of all, con all CC parameters or pitch band signals. And they keep track of all these. And this way, whenever we have a custom translator with relative control, uh, it starts from that value, that the last stored value of that control change signal, and changes the parameter accordingly. So my pedal, so let me actually illustrate the following way. My pedal is all the way down. So the initial, the, the, the first movement that I make with my expression pedal will send the value one or two, or you know, very clo a number close to zero. But it will send the control change uh, brightness signal 64, because the last recorded value is 64. So if I start moving my pedal up, it will start increasing from 64 as I move my pedal up. And the speed of that increment is actually can be controlled here, over here. And now the thing is, so right now I suppose that the brightness is somewhere between 64 and 94, let's say 75. If I take my pedal down, it won't get down. The, the volume doesn't get down because the limit restricts my uh, pedal signal, to, uh, brightness signal to go uh, down. It has to go up to 94 all the way. So if I further move it up, the brightness still goes up to 94. And the moment it reaches to 94, it can't move anywhere because it's limited by the lower limit and upper limits. So now the pedal doesn't do anything at this stage. So even if my pedal is all the way up whenever I move to this section, I still have 64 uh, brightness. I can move my pedal all the way down, doesn't, doesn't change the signal at all, and then increase it to 94. And the same is true, it doesn't have to be that way, so I can you know, restrict my range to anything, and where, where, whatever the position of my pedal is, this will always start from 64, the uh, brightness signal 64, and changes from from there, so, and this allows me to uh, change any parameter, control any parameter with my expression pedal or, you know, with knobs and sliders or anything without any jumps, without any sudden changes in those control changes. It always changes the control controllers smoothly. So that's where this relative control takes place. One other thing that I want to mention is if the lower limit is greater than the upper limits, then the, po the, the, the pedal's polarization just changes. So if I increase my pedal, so let's reset it again, this time it just goes down. So it just changes the polarization if I flip the order of upper limit and lower limits. So that's how the relative control works. And it actually works for any type of controller and allows you to smoothly change anything any parameter without any jump discord, and especially really helpful with the expression pedal. So let's move to the next section. So, so this, this is again the chorus part, it's the same. This it's also open the info part. Now we have a, b a bunch of additional layerings here. And I move to the next section. I keep playing the same two patches. Now I, when I'm going to the next section, okay, before I go to the next section, I want to uh, mention that in this next section, I'm actually changing my back vocals. So let's see, this is a radio effect. I actually create, try to create this radio effect with a distortion and low pass filter. So at this part, I'm doing some back vocals with this kind of radio effect. Where I'm playing also patches here. So there's nothing special here. And if I go to the next one, the, my back vocals are just back to normal here. 
All right, we're almost to the end of the song. Uh, we have two more things that I want to uh, talk about here, the, the things that I haven't shown you before. Now, if I open the live control surface, now you realize that we have a single track with two parts attached to it. So, uh, how does it work? So now you can see that there are these, let me just, sorry. Let me just zoom in here. You can see that there are multi-parts here. Now, if I double tap on this multi-part, it expands and shows the remaining parts on, on that single channel, single track. So what are multi-parts for? So that allows me to uh, stack two parts on a, on a single track. And this allows me to even do more than just interval splittings, but I can even have distinct intervals uh, assigned to a single track. So the reason that I'm using this on this part is I have I have the same region, so this is actually a layering of two sounds, sending the signal on both. So this is a piano sound with some velocity alterations. And this other one, one is one octave down, it's 12 semitones down and with the lower velocity. And so they're together sound like this. So if I need to do a layering on the same instrument, I don't need to create two tracks of the same instrument with the same channel. I can just stick them like that. And here's how it goes. Oops, sorry. I double tap to close it and, you know, it basically works like that. I move a part on, a, on another part and it automatically Oh, okay, let's change my sound back. <laughs> it automatically moves it into the, into the multi-track, a multi-part. I can even change the order of these. Or I can, whoops. I can move multi-parts into other parts and then double tap to close it. So let's undo these operations. I don't need that. So that's what our multi-parts are for. So you can, you can have multiple ranges assigned to a single track or parts with different parameters like different translated, velocity translators or pitch shifters on the same track. So this is a piano, an octave piano sound and on the left hand side I have a layering of two I symphonic orchestras and one Jordan Tron orchestral sound. And that's one last thing that, that I want to simulate here. Now, I'm not using my sustain pedal, but these are automatically sustained. And that's achieved by this auto sustain function. So I have auto sustain on all these parts. And the moment I change the section, the sound automatically cuts off, and that's achieved by another bunch of custom translators. Uh, it receives an odd signal and sends the value of... Sorry, sorry, that's not the one. Uh, no, the, the idea is we actually change the parameters to volume zero on each of these parts. So the moment I change to the next section, the volume all goes down. But as soon as I start playing with my keyboard, basically press the note C2, the volume automatically is sent to this part, the Jordan Tron, the volume is 74, 46 to this part, and 49 to, to this part. So here's what happens. So if I keep playing. So that allows me to cut the sound right at the moment and then just take it, uh, continue from where I'm, where I'm left off. So that's, we still have this um, auto sustain functions here. We still have this multi-part here. And so I'm also doing some back vocals here. And through the end of the song, if I move to the final part, I have this X5 control, which allows me to decrease the volume of everything. 
to simulate a fade down. So I have these live control units, XY control, which decrease the volume. And here is another relative control happening here. So you realize that, let me get the volume back here. The volume here, which actually is actually carried from here, but the volume is 66. And the position that I touched, my initial touch, will always send the value 66. If I, you know, even if I touch here, it's 66. Even if I touch here, it's always 66. And relative from this position, the volume changes. So I, then, I don't need to actually find the exact position of volume 66 on this XY control. I just tap, can tap anywhere and then change the value relatively from that point. So this relative control also applies to these XY control units. And this is actually, I, I, I'm always using X, relative control on XY translators because it's, it's much easier to control them. So this is the song. This is a quick preview of the song In Memoriam. Uh, in another tutorial video, I'm going to focus on my Seaboard block and try to, you know, show you how I can actually control, you know, MP instruments or non-MP instruments using an MP device, and uh, and also use custom translators to change the parameters, you know, the five dimensions of of a Seaboard block to control different parameters of of uh, of that uh, all these instruments or MP or non-MP instruments.